out. All right. Hello, everyone. I am Davina from India. Thank you for joining us, the Media Club, today. On behalf of the Media Education Lab, I welcome you. Just some quick announcements before we begin. We are recording this Zoom meeting for archives, so please turn off your microphones and videos so we have minimum lag. You can enable the closed captions option by scrolling down to your Zoom meeting controls. Please use the chat to introduce yourself. Some of you already have, that's fabulous. And which part of the world you're coming from, fun to know. Um, we will also use the chat to share resources as we progress through this session. So please share relevant information and links in chat. I'll be compiling all of these resources and sharing them in the form of a Google Doc. Link will be in the chat in just a minute. Uh, please save the link so you can access the Google Doc later. Um, I'll be introducing our topic and hosts for today in just a second. We've planned a very exciting session for you. There are also a few fun announcements coming your way towards the end of the meeting, so stay tuned. Right, so on to business. <laughs> today, we are taking a media club discussion forward from last month's meeting, where we deliberated over a podcast and AI from the Ezra Klein show. Our hosts are back. Thank you again for being here, Christina Cordero, Kate Dalton, and Christina Moda. If you attended the meeting or have watched the recording of the meeting that happened last month in April, please let us know your thoughts in chat. Uh, the meeting last time was such a hit. In case you missed it, I'm adding a link to details and recording in the chat in a bit. But if you didn't have a chance to see the meeting or the recording, um, don't worry. Our amazing hosts have included a short recap to our last meeting in their opening. And uh, they're really amazing. They planned a super media club session for you today. Uh, keeping in mind your excitement about breakouts from last time, we hear your feedback. <laughs> and... Um, just onto our fantastic hosts and their achievements and passions. Uh, Kate Dalton is the co-founder and CEO of Mark Tracker. It's a fabulous platform for critical media literacy, curriculum instruction and assessment. Kate currently serves as a writing assessment consultant within the New York City Department of Education's Office of Teaching and Learning. She's passionate about the intersection of language, technology and education. Say hi, Kate. Hello, thank you. <laughs> All right. Um, Christina Cordero, PhD, is a researcher and product developer in the ethics space um, and currently teaches at Brooklyn College, City University of New York. And I see in chat there's someone else from Brooklyn College too. Uh, fun. Uh, she's interested in all the ways digital technologies will support literacy learning in both uh, the traditional sense and in the more contemporary sense of new literacies, digital literacies, multimodality, and the multiliteracies pedagogical framework. Say hi, Christina. Yeah, unmute. Hey everyone, good to see you. Excited to talk today. All right. And we also have Christina Moda, PhD, who has a background in artificial intelligence with a research focus on natural language processing, NLP, over the last 25 years. Uh, Christina is currently a research associate at INS ID, working on paraphrasing systems and the founder and CEO of kinderbots.org, a nonprofit focused on teaching research uh, sorry, teaching children computer science and robotics, something that I'm very interested in. And someone in chat, I think it was um, Chris, who was interested in the same. So let us know more about it. Hi, Christina. Hi, everyone. Welcome back. We're really excited to have you here again. All right. Our hosts have worked really hard over the last couple of weeks to bring you a fantastic session today. And they've also asked their media club regulars Scott and Joyce to join them in coordinating the breakout sessions this meeting. Hi, Scott and Joyce. Can you come up on camera and off mute and say hi? Greetings, everybody. Hi. Hi, it's a pleasure to be here. All right. So with that, my opening is done. Over to the hosts, Christina, Kate, and Christina. <clears throat> All right, thank you so much for that wonderful introduction, Davina. It is a pleasure to be here. Um, we're gonna go to the next slide and just let you know that we're gonna give you a brief recap of what we've done before. So if you were here, it looks familiar. Um, and then we really like to get you guys going into your breakout sessions. We'll have two breakout rooms today. 
like we did last time, we're framing this in terms of critical media literacy and looking at the relationship between generative AI and issues like access and power and knowledge. So we're going to use these kind of key questions to have them in our head as we go to do our activities today and hopefully produce an outcome within our groups. So um, with that in mind, let's go to our next slide. So this was a late breaking slide that we put in because today, um, I don't know if all, any, everybody saw, there was an article um, in the New York Times about this uh, Jeffrey Hinton, who's the AI godfather who left Google mainly because he wanted to be able to speak a little bit more freely about this issue that is extremely concerning to him. Uh, so he left Google and he's concerned you know, about all the ways that generative AI is gonna upend the, the job market and the landscape of news and false information and true information. And he was one of the people that signed the, um, the big letter that all the big tech pe people, lots of people in tech signed. But this, you know, this quote, what he said, that's interesting. He said they could replace paralegals, personal assistants, translators, and others who handle rote tasks. Um, I actually didn't like that because I was a literary translator for many years. <laughs> Translating is not a rote task, but I get it. That, but, you know, this is really what I, you know, I think we're kind of called here to talk about. And in my breakout room, we're going to talk about it. I hope a little bit of like, what are the tasks that we want to delegate to um, generative AI and what aren't the, the tasks? And what's our, you know, what is our role as teachers, educators, whether we're in, you know, K to 12 or university or in a library or in some other setting? You know, what are the considerations, this bullet list of considerations that we think are really, you know, preconditions to dealing with the topic of um, generative AI with young people, you know, young people are learners in general, even if they're not young. So, you know, I, and, I, and I think, and I'd love to talk about this in my group, but now I'll shut up. It takes away the drudge work. And I, you know, that's already a very loaded term. Like what's drudge work to some people may not be drudge work to other people. And also the notion of what drudge work is may change over time. And I think that in other areas, it's much clearer, like in medicine and other kinds of research. But in our field, the, I think it'd be interesting for us to double click on that topic. So hot off the press today. Um, but uh, Kate, I think you were gonna. Okay, yes, no, actually it's Christina Moda um, recapping some key terms for, for us just to ground ourselves in the conversation. Um, this is just a reminder of what we talked a month ago, uh, that ChatGPT is in the center of the conversation today. Uh, it was released in November um, uh, 2022. Uh, it's powered by large language models. So now everyone has been talking about large language models. Uh, and uh, it fits in the large cate category of gen generative AI, which means it creates new, new content. This is just a, a couple, like five words that we need to keep in mind to know more about. It's what it means, uh, AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, also to be mindful of AI hallucinations, uh, deep learning and prompt engineering. But uh, I'm sure there's more terms that you would like to know more about and that's what we're going to talk in one of the breakout rooms. Kate? Okay, great. Yeah, and these are just some pulled out quotes that we went over in our first session from the podcast with Ezra Klein and Gary Marcus a skeptical take on the AI revolution. We also touched down on the on the dangers of stochastic parrots paper written by Timnit Guru and Emily Bender and Margaret Mitchell and Gonzalez. I think I got all the names, <laughs> um, but we have some key quotes pulled out here about you know what the language says and what how that says about different viewpoints. And we're gonna examine that in the breakout room I'm facilitating actually. Um, we're also gonna look at the other ideas related to the potential for bullshit at scale um, that Gary Marcus brought up a lot. And then um, what Christina had brought up before about Nick Cave's newsletter about AI and our relationship to us as humans and artists and creative people. So we can go to the next slide. So this was a, um, this is just like a little bit of a pastiche, a collage of the topics that came up in the different breakout. Um, rooms last week. And, you know, they range from the, you know, 
fears and concerns, which are in kind of the um, pinkish color, which I think is interesting that there are more fears and concerns than optimism. Um, and I would assume that that will change all the time. But we talked about, you know, the, how the emergence of generative AI can help us to reformulate, you know, what it makes, what makes us human. And that's a, you know, a very positive spin on it. Um, and then of course the optimistic, you know, personal assistant notion of like how it can help us and save time. But of course the concerns seem to kind of outweigh that, um, the concern about driving the cost of bullshit to zero, um, then maybe asking our questions about, uh, you know, why certain people want to shut it down. You know, these fears of, these fears or concerns about uh, people's motives. Um, there was a fear about chat GPT being used without teacher mediation, copyright, um, also a concern about people who are not steeped in the technology, sometimes talking without knowing what they're talking about. And finally, this whole idea of the algorithms are being hidden. Um, I think Scott, this is what you had brought up, you know, that a little, how a little bit of CS should be int integrated into traditional literacy. So all these quotes were really what inspired us to formulate the, um, the topics for the breakout rooms, which are, you know, come out of what the concerns that you all raised last session. Was this okay. me? You're unmuted. You're mute. Oh my gosh, after like what, three years in, into the pandemic and we still get muted, I'm sorry. So today's task will be to develop an, an artifact or a list of action items for chat GPT and media literacy in breakout rooms. We'll have five to six breakout rooms in the one, it, it will be led by Joyce Valenza. It's about teaching library practice. Uh, then we'll have Scott uh, Moss in literacy and computer science. Christina Cordero will lead the writing and chat GPT. Kate Totten will lead the language power and data ethics. Uh, myself, uh, I will lead the essential AI concepts. And finally, there's a group that it's a group led uh, about legislation and civic action. Uh, those are some of the questions each group will uh, be uh, uh, discussing. Uh, so um, let's go to the next slide to Kate for some instructions. Oh, there you go, Kate. And yeah, and that last group, Davina may be popping in with you a little bit on the legislation one too. Um, so yeah, like we said, you're going to have um, that goal at the end to create an artifact. That could be your top 10 list of recommendations. It could be a lesson plan, what have you, what your group will decide that you're going to do. But the first part you're going to be around the same topics. So you're going to be in the same group for both part one and part two, um, but you're going to be brainstorming and like discussing the themes and the issues related to your topic or how might we, to borrow a phrase from design thinking, address this in our teaching context, whatever your topic may be. You're going to brainstorm for your list of recommendations, go back to those guiding questions. Once again, that's going to be for 10 minutes and then you're going to regroup, come back. We're going to clarify anything, share out, maybe, you know, group think, get our hive mind together and see uh, if we can help each other out. Then you're going to go group two and 15 minutes. It's tight time frame, but you're going to come up with, you know, your output today, your artifact, your list with your group um, for teaching actions, educator actions, media literacy practitioners, what have you um, for us to take out of here. And you're gonna have a challenge. Um, we don't want this to just live here today, but um, you get extra credit if you come back to us in the group and you know you have the email exchange, you say, we're gonna do this X, Y, Z. We're gonna get our students to write to Congress people, whatever you're gonna do, if you have that follow-up action, um, that is your challenge today for, for living beyond this session. So, so yeah, we're going to um, go ahead and do that um, breakout into part one. It, can I actually just get a volunteer? Can anyone like repeat back to me what we're doing in part one or part two today? I actually can't see here. Uh, do I get a hand raised? All right, let's see. Um, let's see. Christina Cordero, can you repeat back what we're doing just so we can have it one more time? <laughs> You're such a teacher. I love it. <laughs> so, in the first part, breakout part one, this is the way we're envisioning it. We're just going to look at, you know, pick, look at this one, two, three, four, five, six, and pick which breakout room you want to go to. And we can just brainstorm like what are the concerns and topics that we have and that we, so that we can put them on a, you know, put them on the table. Like, what are the top, issues that we want to address in a serious way, then we're going to 
after that breakout, we're gonna come back and share for like five minutes. And then we're gonna to return to the same breakout rooms, I would think, and kind of bring all those brainstormed ideas down into concrete recommendations in terms of what we think as educators are the important tasks or actions to be taken in, in to that, to, to our topic and in our context. Did I get it right, Kate? Perfect. Thank you. Um, and I know a lot of you are probably thinking, well, which group am I going in right now? So you're going to get to choose that. And Davina is going to open up the rooms. And then if, you know, there are people maybe that are not sure or don't have the Zoom configuration, they'll touch base, hang with Davina, and she'll help facilitate that from here. So um, without further ado, we'll go into our breakouts. I'm opening all the rooms now and participants can choose which room they want to go to. If you can't, let me know and I'll send you to that room. Opening all rooms now, you have 10 minutes. So we can, I'm just pausing recording. And we're back from our first breakout room. Hi, and thank you everyone. Um, thank you to my group and you guys getting started. I'm gonna drop the link to the Google Doc here in the chat just in case a group didn't happen to get it or, you know, Christina Cordero, if she's back, I think she's going to facilitate. We're going to hear yeah. from my groups um, right now. Yeah, good. Yeah. Hi. So we just, I oh got, I feel like we did not have barely enough time, but my group, we're going to come back and talk a little more is um, we'd love to just have about five minutes to talk about the, um, just to go around and share and see if anybody would like to, for a specific group, share what they uh, discussed. Um, our invited breakout group leaders, Scott and Joyce, maybe uh, either you or somebody from your group could just give us a recap of what you touched on. We didn't get all that far after the introductions. and so, We didn't either. We didn't either. <laughs> uh, but issues like academic honesty and, and setting new norms um, are certainly there. Uh, there, you know, we really didn't get far. We talked a bit about um, Ron, for instance, was sharing about how some of the major tasks that are particularly, uh, you know, daunting um, uh, tools like ChatGPT can be usually helpful to an educator. Um, I started talking about new policies that that are emerging. I was going. I was looking for it, but didn't get a chance to show the International Baccalaureate Program has a what I think is a wonderful model of policy um, that um, that respects students and 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 is um, kind of developed to recognize academic honesty rather than put a kind of plagiarist plagiarism label on things um, and and what level. What level consists cons, do we think of as cheating, and what level is about support? Um, what is synthesis? And, and Deb mentioned the idea of um, looking at synthesis in in a new way, um, and 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 the option thinking about sources. Deb, jump jump in because um, I'm not I'm not doing that justice. I actually think that was very good, Joyce. Let's hear from another group. Okay. All right. Um, well, we talked about the overlap between um, computer literacy and uh, media literacy or traditional literacy. And also we we um, spent the bulk of our time uh, saying hi and getting to know each other. But um, a lot of it had to do with the relationship between kind of content and um, creator. So uh, talking about... Uh, and this is a media literacy thing, of course, in general, but how analysis informs creation and vice versa and how that's kind of a cycle that uh, students do need some exposure, some interaction with computer literacy from the point of view of the creator, um, just as we, you know, learn reading to improve writing and writing to improve reading and those kinds of things. Um, also, uh, computer, I'm just reading now, computer literacy helps learners understand uh, messaging, there's a variety of symbols in traditional literacy, and there's uh, other types of symbols um, related to computer literacy. And if I'm not summarizing your, your point well, please uh, jump in and help me out. Um, and again, understanding the relationship between content and tools, just as we learn 
about camera angles and music and other things with kind of traditional literacy, um, knowing a little bit of computer science, knowing a little bit of, uh, I think Luke wrote about this, uh, you know, learning about if then statements and conditionals, just a little bit of computer science could go a long way to understanding kind of what's going on. So they don't think, it, you know, we don't think it was just like magic, I guess. And, um, and looking just as we do with uh, traditional literacy, we look at author's purpose, creator's purpose, I think to do that uh, regarding uh, algorithms and computer technology is another place where it overlaps. And again, if anybody wants to jump in from our, my group and, and clarify or add, please do. I, I just want to add something though. I, I think we're only like, we're, we're largely talking about image generation and chat GPT where there are so many other applications that are coming out that I don't want us to make blanket statements or come up with, with writings that look at one thing and call it the whole thing. Definitely think the contextualization of it is really important with the generative AI. And I think Scott alluded to it um, a little bit about like the purpose and audience. I, I heard the rhetorical situation in that as well, which is something that um, came up in our group and Claude, can I, uh, pass it to you a little bit to elaborate more because Claude and I both have backgrounds in rhetoric. So yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Kate. Uh, I mean, I think in our group, the uh, compelling part of the conversation was just about how little teens seem to understand. Um, uh, one of our group members was was referencing this idea that this is moving quickly, and although teens and young adults we use the phrase digital natives to describe a whole grouping of, of young folks that AI and, and these generative models don't really seem to be very clear to them. And then we move then to just like the broader conversation about the public discourse around these technologies and uh, the extent to which people in the margins or marginalized populations have access to, um, can make sense of, are invited into conversations about how this technology functions and fits into their daily lives. I raised the issue of class and, and um, the, the folk, working class folks having the opportunity to sort of understand the threats and uh, benefits of, of technology, uh, because I know we're hearing quite a bit about folks um, feeling afraid of losing jobs and occupations and all of the replacement conversations we're having today. And so, yeah, I, I do think uh, there are a wide range of a sort of digital divide extensions in this conversation that the like public discourse is really begging for us to intentionally protect folks from in terms of education and awareness. How's that sound, Kate? Close? Oh, that was amazing. Thank yeah. you. Uh, you got a lot of the conversation in there, challenging, definitely. Thank you. Um, so what we're gonna do right now is I'm gonna take a second. I wanna clarify any questions that you guys have um, for part two. If we can go to that next slide, Christina. Hey Kate, can um, I say something really quickly? Yeah, sure. I felt the same way as Joyce did that like we kind of, we 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 just kind of began to touch on some things and that if it feels very ambitious, what we're gonna set out for, um, the second part of the great breakout room, I really want to make it clear that like the, the, the three of us that Kate, Christina and I were really interested in this being like the beginning of a conversation and for us as a media literacy club to maybe think about, you know, these breakout rooms as potential um, starting points for, you know, maybe position statements of some sort in our different, in the different areas we are. And my group, I think we were really, really just thinking very strictly about like writing and what it means to writing. I think, and from what you guys have all described, it does sound like your groups are pretty um, focused in your tracks, even though we did not hear from Christina Mota. But I just wanted to put that out there, that this could be like, a, this would be great if this were, a, to be continued conversation. Yes, yes, and that, again, we have our challenge there. Please come back. Um, we wanna hear your action items with your group and um, we're definitely gonna hear from all the groups and the legislation group when we get back from um, the last one. But from now, we're gonna try, we're gonna do our best in this 15 minutes to try to um, develop a list of recommendations and outcomes. Um, we have 10 spaces in that Google Doc for you. We'd love to have everybody in your group kind of in there and thinking. So we have everybody has a chance to participate. And then, you know, also with the discussion. 
And so you're going to get into your group. You're going to come up with a list of recommendations or some other artifacts. So your first step might be, what are we going to develop? And then your next step might be brainstorming and getting in there and group writing and then sharing and discussing. You know, obviously do what you need to do to um, reach that goal, but, you know, so be flexible. We're, we're good with that. So um, are there any questions at this time? Okay, great. So we're going to, um, once again, go back to our first breakout group um, with this next task of um, developing this list of recommendations or artifact. And um, I know you've requested 15 minutes, but I'm afraid we're short on time. So you're only going to get 10 and I'm using my facilitator privileges to cut Sure, sure. So forward. 10 minutes, we're going to take 10 minutes and do that. Um, great. Room's open. All right, so everyone is back from their breakouts. And what I'm gonna do before I hand it over to the hosts to summarize is send in chat a couple of links for you to follow. It has the Media Club for today's information in case you missed it, the April Media Club information and recording in case you wanna keep track of it, the Google Doc, which has all the resources. It has everything from last time, we're also going to add everything from today in the same Google document and the Google document that we've created for the breakouts. Over to you, hosts. All right. Well, so thank you. Oh, Go sorry, Kate. I was going to yeah. share the screen and then you just direct me. <laughs> oh, perfect. No, yeah. Why don't you go ahead and get started? Um, do you want to share out from your group or did you have somebody from your group that wants to share out? Uh, they definitely chose me. <laughs> <laughs> but then uh, at least I want some uh, comments from uh, Gretchen as well. So let me just go stop the presentation. Um, and I'm just going to share that in our group, we started by doing a kind of a voting. We're very little, but you know, it was enough to see that even with such a small group, uh, I suggested five terms for everyone to that they wanted to learn more or they think they want clarification or they need help to also uh, talk with other people. So the, the audience for our group was um, adults. Let me just share here. Uh, of course, now it's going too slow. And, yeah. and I just want to give us a time check, like we got to. Yes. So, but uh, this, the I think the biggest, I think the other groups were all working for kind of themselves a little bit to the kind of experts they are. But in our group, we really wanted to give information to other people. What's the information we need to give to adults, either, for instance, in the context of a library or such as parents or the school administration uh, to teach these concepts to uh, other people? Um, so we thought that 10 terms were too, ma too many because, for instance, the computer science for all only uh, explains kind of the five biggest concepts. So we were trying to reduce the list to five uh, main concepts. And of course, AI deep learning, AI hallucinations related to the, tru to the truth. Uh, how truthful are these results are really important. And also an understanding of how these algorithms work. How do they train? So uh, the kind of data you need to select and also the machine learning, how does machine uh, learning uh, works? Um, so there, there, it was very interesting, but again, we just touched the surface <laughs> and we were not able to define all these terms by writing, but uh, we definitely think this should be something gathered, uh, for instance, to the computer science for all, but uh, to help educators talk about AI and to use AI after that. Okay, thank you so much. Um, and can we hear from the legislation group? Do we have a legislation group? Um, I did mention in the breakouts document that that group is not in the working, so no. Oh, okay. Um, all right, so let's go to um, Joyce, your group. Thanks. Um, Ron was sharing that he had an actual need, um, and I think his need is not um, unique, uh, and he is going to, for, his, for a project, he's going to create a professional development um, a series of professional developments for teachers relating to AI use in September. And I think that's something that um, might be very useful. Um, and group, feel free to jump in. But we started outlining perhaps the first session or um, 
an outline of multiple sessions that would be relevant uh, in this context. And I don't know if I should share screen or not. We don't have very much time. Yeah, so yeah, thank you. I'm gonna, for the sake of time, if we could just actually go to each group and hear your outcome, um, that I mean, I'm just gonna call on you in like one sentence, um, what you you know produced or plan on doing. Um, I will tell you that my group, um, we developed a reading list and we're going to work together afterwards to put one large reading list together and, you know, think and go through if we're developing syllabus recommendations, literary, nonfiction, contemporary, not contemporary. So um, we're really excited about that. Scott Moss, what about your group? One sentence. Um, I think maybe similar to the first group, we would create uh, maybe some teacher training um, in a way that uh, facilitates them to help uh, their students have interactions with AI that are meaningful and relevant to them uh, to, um, you know, use, I don't know if you're familiar with the tools such as Google Quick Draw or uh, the Google Teachable Machine, where kids can interact with um, with AI and, and algorithms and kind of see a little bit behind the scenes and get that perspective. And ideally, depending on the age group, having them create perhaps simple, simple recommendation engines in Scratch or whatever and code.org um, and then give them that behind the scenes but of course uh, teachers would need uh training for that so i love it you. love it that's very tangible that's really cool um and practical with that planning so um christina cordero hi we were really lucky to have um you know educators and and writers and a, psycho a psychologist who's a writer K to 12 educators in our group. And I think that what we kind of came up with, and I put my email in here, is that the important thing for us who work in literature and literacy with uh, students from K to 12 or beyond is to discern which types of writing can be really aided by a tool of generative AI and which type, you know, like, Maybe all of them can be. I'm thinking of creative writing, informative writing, persuasive writing, which is what as writing teachers we teach. And to what, to what extent uh, generative AI could be a tool or not for you know, the different tasks that we engage in as readers and writers. And so um, I would hope that we can get together again because I, with a couple of the people in our group, we talked about maybe writing an article about this because there's just so much to unpack in the realm of creativity and and both as readers and as writers. So awesome. I put an email in the chat. Yeah, thank you. And I just actually- Who else wants to come in? We, it would be great to co-author an article or something. And Davina, definitely with the Media Education Lab, you know, as the family from which we would be writing. So yeah, thank you. We have um, we have a thank you slide, but I just dropped our link tree um, in here for our contact information. If you would like to, everybody drop your LinkedIn here if you desire, um, you know, to stay in touch with people here or your email um, or wherever we can find you online if you are still on Twitter. Um, and um, thank you again for um, your participation today. And if you're at part one, thank you, Media Lab for um, Education Lab for hosting us. Davina, I'm gonna hand it off to you. Thank you. Yes, thank you so much. And I'm going to be really quick in closing. What a wonderful session this was. Thank you so much, hosts, for all your hard work. And thank you to the audience for engaging so brilliantly. Um, running quickly to announcements, if you enjoyed this session, you will certainly love what we plan for you in the June Media Club meeting. Our next Media Club meeting is, as usual, the first Monday of the month, which happens to be the 5th of June. And the 5th of June is also celebrated as World Environment Day. So we've invited our Media Education Lab longtime friends to discuss a chapter they wrote, the Routledge Handbook of Media Education Futures Post Pandemic, edited by our lab co-director, Dr. Yonki Freusen and others. Uh, the chapter is Global Perspectives on Eco-Media Literacy, Eco-Justice, and Media Education in a Post-Pandemic World by Antonio Lopez. Teresa Redmond and Jeff Scher. So tune in on the 5th of June, the first Monday of the month, as usual, for a media club at the same time. Um, if you've already registered for the media club, you can use the same link to join us. If not, I'm just sharing the link for the Zoom registration in chat. And here is also the link to the chapter if you want to get a sneak peek into what we're going to be discussing. Another announcement is. Uh, my co-manager, Jocelyn, who is part of the group today, um, we have launched 
a very timely and brilliant webinar series called AI in the Classroom. And our media education lab members, Frank, uh, he's already spoken on chat GPT, and Michelle already spoke on media literacy and AI in April. And now we have Pamela and Scott scheduled for May 4th on AI literacy. And Catherine and Dana will be talking about teaching prompt engineering in classrooms on May 15th. I hope you can join us and please share about this in your networks. I'm sharing those links in chat too. The first link is um, the AI in the Classroom webinar series. And the second link is the Zoom registration for the webinar series. We're finalizing our June, July webinar series topics on AI in the Classroom and the future media club meetings now. If you want to host the media club or uh, you want to discuss or present something in the webinar series, uh, please let us know. Um, I'm just also adding our contact information in chat. Um, this is all the time we have today. Thank you so much for joining us. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.